Someone recently requested a video demo on speech masking, so I've decided to record this video that I'll have a demonstration of SRT and WRS masking. I've got a case pulled up in Theta that will require speech masking. We've got normal hearing in the left ear with a moderately severe hearing loss in the right. The first step in masking is knowing when you need to mask. For pure tones, we compare how much sound crosses over to the bone conduction threshold at the same frequency. But since speech is made up of many frequencies, we need to check to see if masking is needed by comparing the amount of speech that crosses over to any of the measured bone conduction thresholds in the non-test ear. The speech presentation level will lose around 40 dB for super oral headphones, so presenting the SRT at 40 dB in the right ear will cross over to the left non-test ear at about 0 dB HL. We have two bone conduction thresholds that could possibly hear the crossover at that level, so we do need to mask the right ear. Let's take a look at the left ear. We measured the unmasked SRT at 5 dB HL, and a 5 dB HL speech sound would lose about 40 dB after interaural attenuation and be heard in the non-test ear, the right ear this time, at negative 35 dB HL. Since all of the right ear bone conduction thresholds are higher than negative 35 dB HL, we don't need to mask the left ear for the SRT. Now that we know we need to mask the right ear for SRT, how much masking do we need to get the right value? Some people use the plateau method, which would start at the SRT of the non-test ear plus a 10 or 20 dB safety pad, and then using the usual plateau procedure. Another method, called the acoustic method, involves finding one level of masking that should be effective, then re-establishing the threshold with that amount of masking turned on. The math takes a second, but this method is a reliable way to get the right amount of masking every time. You need to calculate the minimum and maximum masking levels and present masking at the average of these two values. This should place you right on the midpoint of the masking plateau. To learn more about the plateau, check out our masking plateau video. The minimum masking level is the unmasked SRT minus the interaural attenuation plus a 10 dB safety pad. This level should be just above any sound that could cross over. You'll need to add in any significant air bone gaps to this calculation if you're dealing with conductive losses. The maximum masking level is the best bone conduction threshold in the test ear, in this case the right ear, plus the interall attenuation, minus 5 dB. Any more masking than this, and we'll be over masking. If we average these two values, we should be right in the middle of the plateau. The minimum masking level here is 10 dB HL, and the maximum masking level is 90 dB HL. So if we put in 50 dB HL of masking in the left ear, we can re-establish the threshold and find the true value. You can use the same principles to determine when to mask for WRS testing and for masking when you need to. Compare your presentation level to the best bone conduction threshold in the non-test ear. If your speech crossover, which is your presentation level after being reduced by interaural attenuation, is audible by bone conduction, then you will need to mask. Let's check the right ear. Using the 2K plus SL method for word recognition presentation levels from Guthrie and McCursey, our word rec presentation level should be 80 dB HL, 70 dB 2K threshold plus a 10 dB SL buffer. An 80 dB speech sound will lose about 40 dB of sound as it crosses over to the non-test ear, so an 80 dB speech sound in the right ear will sound about 40 dB HL loud in the left. Can our left ear hear anything at 40 dB HL by bone conduction? Absolutely. All of the bone conduction thresholds are less than 40 dB HL, so we definitely need to mask. Most people just put in masking at 20 or 30 dB lower than the presentation level, which is a quick method that works well most of the time. Following this method, we would throw in about 60 dB of masking into the left ear. The acoustic method here also works. In this case, the minimum masking level is the presentation level minus interall attenuation plus a 10 dB safety pad. Again, remember to also add any significant air bone gaps if you're dealing with conductive loss in the non-test ear. So the minimum masking level would be 50 dB HL, and the maximum masking level would still be 90 dB HL, which we calculated before for SRT. So the average between these two values would be 70 dB of masking, which as you can see, isn't too different from the 60 dB HL we got using our shortcut method. There are some scenarios where the shortcut won't work. I'd encourage you to learn and use the acoustic method to optimize your speech masking. 